Hello, this is Luca Comai. This video describes the complementation test. Assume that we have found two mutants in a species of interest. We use plants here, but it will work exactly in the same way for flies, or mice, or humans. The mutants have the same phenotype. In this case, they are short. They are also independently derived, and each is recessive and displays a 3 to 1 segregation ratio, indicating that they are most likely single-genic. We wish to understand whether these two mutations affect the same gene, and also to understand more about the trait they display. To show how the tests work, I'm going to make up a plausible molecular mechanism. Assume the plant height is determined by two genes, A and B. The genes are shown as boxes on a stick chromosome. A encodes the triangle protein. B encodes the ball protein. Triangle and ball proteins make a protein complex that is required for plants to become tall. A mutant called red has a lesion in the A gene, which can no longer make the triangle protein. The protein complex is not formed and the plant is short. Another mutant, the blue mutant, has a lesion in the B gene and as a result it cannot make the ball protein. The protein complex is not made and the result is a short plant. We now cross the red and the blue mutants producing an F1 that is heterozygous for both genes. In the cell of the hybrid there is a good copy that is an allele of A and a good copy of B. The protein complex is made and it results in a tall plant. We can say that the red and blue mutants complement it and thus are in different genes. We now get a new mutant, green, and we cross it to the red mutant. The hybrid makes the B protein, but not the A protein. The complex is not formed and the resulting plant is short. The red and green mutants do not complement and thus are in the same gene. The implications of the complementation test are profound. A simple test provides information on gene function. Consider, for example, what it means when mutations at two genes produce the same mutant phenotype. First, the gene products may work together in a protein complex. Second, they may work independently but in series along a pathway, like in a bucket brigade, if one guy falls, the bucket stops. Another possibility is that the genes work in parallel and that the products of two independent pathways are needed for the wild-type phenotype. In conclusion, simple crosses of mutants and observation of their progeny can help determine the number of genes required for a process and in formulating mechanistic hypotheses of gene and protein function.